Hi everybody, welcome to my third beam video. In this video I'm going to be plotting the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the beam that you see here. If you want to see another beam example, a bending moment shear force diagram example, feel free to check out any of my other beam videos. So the first step, whenever you see a beam problem and you have to plot bending moment diagrams and shear force diagrams, is going to be to define the reactions at the supports. So we can do that by making an overall free body diagram. All right, so I've drawn it in. All right, so I've drawn in my reactions. I've labeled my directions. And I was set to find what R1 and R2 are. So let's do some of the forces. Sum of moments, I'll do it around this point here to be zero. All right, now I just included this point moment just as you know something there without timesing it by length because this moment could be applied anywhere if we're just doing this overall moment equation. All right, now you can't just apply it anywhere when we do the cuts later, but the overall you just include it as part of your equation. So we can solve this and R2 equals and you can plug R2 into here and solve for R1. So R1 is just P minus R2 so P minus this whole contraption and then R1 all right there we go now we're free to move into making the cuts to find the internal shear and bending moment all right so this is very similar again to axial bars because in axial bars we made a cut every time there was a change in conditions. Here we're going to make a cut here. It's all the same in here. We can describe it all by the same equation. Oh, it changed here. And here it changes again. So I'll make a cut here. In this case I'm going to decide to look this way because there's a lot less things to worry about on this side of the line, just the reaction, than having to consider this and this and this in our free body diagrams. So I'm going to call this here one All right, there we have it, and we can do some of the forces and some of the moments. All right, now the reason I take the sum of the moments around V1, or basically this joint here, is because that when I take moments about here, I only need to deal with this reaction, all right? The shear force doesn't matter because it's applied at the point where I'm taking the moment. And if I would take it from here, I would have to consider V1. And the only way I could know V1 was by doing the sum of the forces. So I would have to get this right in order to get this right. All right, whereas if I just do around this point I only need to use R1 and I don't need this information so it just eliminates a step where you can make a mistake I circumvent making a mistake there by just choosing to do it around the cut joint all 
All right, and this, of course, is of a length x because we started at the base and we made a distance x away. All right, there we go. Let's move on to the second free body diagram of this piece that now includes the force P. All right, now notice I've labeled the subscripts too because we're dealing with the second section there. All right, so the same process, sum of forces, sum of moments. Again, take them about this piece. I'll speed through them here for you. All right, now here again comes that problem of distance. Where do we choose the arbitrary distance x to come in? So we could choose x to start from here and go up to this cut, or we could start x to cut from, start from where p is applied and make it work its way out to there. All right, there's advantages and disadvantages to both situations. I personally like to take x, start here and go to here. Otherwise, you're gonna develop an x equation and it's only going to be valid for a certain range of x values. And then when you go to plot it, you're going to have to think about, here's your axes, and then your graph only applies out here somewhere. So you're going to have to think about that. Whereas if you take x to start here, basically what you've just done is move the coordinate system over, and then it's easy to plot. Okay, so I do it this way. You can do it another way. All right, it's a free world. All right, there you have it, our equation for M2. It's a bit convoluted, and I won't expand that out now. All right, moving to the third free body diagram. That would be, of course, the last piece. Okay, here we go. Now, how are we going to define x in this situation? Because previously, we had some fixed point, and we just ran x out from that fixed point. And our length of our piece was x. In this case, it's not that. So, we want to make x start 
from the point where m0 is applied. All right, and then work its way out. And the distance we're looking at, of course, is just this piece here. That's what we want to find. We know that the total distance, x plus this distance, equals l by 3. So we can say that this distance here is simply l by 3 minus x. Or you can imagine this has a distance x, this has a total distance l by 3, like such, where the rest of this piece is like this. All right, with the moment being applied here. So once again, let's do some of the forces in each direction, some of the moments in each direction, and see what we see. All right, and there we have it, the expressions for the shear force and the bending moment in all three pieces. So let's go ahead and draw our axes here. Okay, now before we plot that, it's always good to get an intuitive idea of what's going on, just to check to make sure you've done it right. So taking a look at this bit here, we can imagine that if we start the shear force, there is a reaction here that's going to bump us up. So we're going to be up here somewhere. Now there's nothing to change that height of that bumped up reaction. So this is going to be a constant at some value. Oh, P, boom, it kicks us down of a value p. Then we continue along, applied moment. But the moment doesn't do anything to the shear force. After all, it's a moment. So we can probably going to continue on with the same magnitude here. And then they're going to get kicked down to zero by what's left over of the reaction here. Or you can imagine, depending on you know how big we are initially, we could be below zero and then come back up later on with the other reaction. Then for the bending moment, it's going to be, we can always look at the shape of the deflected profile. So you can imagine, like the, cent the, the axis here, it's going to kind of be going down. And then it's going to be twisted here, all right, kind of like this. All right, so that's going to tell us, you know, quite a, few, a, a bit of things. Everywhere the thing is, you know, positive. That, that can tell us something about it because a positive bending moment is positive. But you can also just look at it as the integration of V. So if V was up here, it's going to be like a positive slope, steep. And then here it's also going to be you know, some slope. And depending on how much V kicked us down or not, all right, so depending on the magnitude of this, I mean, this magnitude could be quite smaller so that we're pretty well always in a happy face shape. So depending on how much M0 is, that's going to 
kick us down and make us go slowly down here. All right, so always try to get an intuitive idea what, of what's happening. So shear force, you just imagine you're getting kicked, bumped down, pushed up again, maybe by another force here it could be, and then the reaction should always bring you back to zero again. All right, so let's go ahead and actually plot these. All right, there we go. And this totally makes sense that this has a jump here, all right? So I'm not gonna like go and work through and prove why, what the value is here, prove what the value is here, prove that it goes to the other, that's just a lot of tedious algebra, but this is the way it is. And it makes sense this, that the it jumps here because after all, we have this a bit of applied moment here. Another thing you want to realize is that like I was saying before, the curve of this deflection depends on how strong this moment is. So in my case, I chose it to be that when I added P, it didn't push the shear force into the negative, so it didn't allow me to have quite a bit of a, a different situation happening here. Actually, this is wrong. This should be going like this. Without the difference here. And the bending moment difference goes all the way down here. All right, sorry about that. So let me just color it in red. What's the actual piece? All right. Ah, now we all make mistakes. All right, the only thing that the bending moment did is make a jog in the magnitude. It didn't change the slope because if you notice here, this slope was a constant value constant positive value, so that means here has to be the same slope, all right, because if we take this, the derivative, we get V. So if the slope is here, or one constant value, that means the slope here should be all the same value, all right, and the only way we can get that after adding a discrete moment is if we had just all of a sudden a jump in that. That makes sense, that jump corresponds to the magnitude there. All right, sorry for that little bit of confusion there, but that's, that's the way it is. I'll explain it one more time real quick. Since the shear force was constant, and the moment is the integration of the shear force, that means our slope here must be the same. All right, and just because the slope is the same doesn't mean it has to be the same line. All right, it could be slightly displaced line with the same slope. All right, there we go. So, that's my... Uh, Hmm, didn't even give the number here. Wait, I did. It's all the way over right here. So that's my third beam video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in my next.